everyone, welcome back. In this last video, we're going to go over a few special considerations when you are computing, when you are evaluating a project. Um, so one of the very important key to remember is that the required return, meaning the cost of of equity, the cost of debt, the required return on any investment should be consistent with the risk of the investment. So when we use the weighted average cost of capital as a discount rate, we are assuming that the project we are evaluating has very similar risk to the firm's current business. However, if that's not the case, then we need to make some adjustment. So there are uh, a number of um, examples that um, in recent um, events that lead to this particular consideration. For example, uh, Amazon uh, purchased Whole Foods. Amazon is an online shopping platform. Whole Foods is a grocery store. So it, the, operating, the business risk and the characteristics of a grocery store is very different than the operating risk of an online um, retailer. So when Amazon is evaluating the purchase of Whole Foods, um, it will not have the same risk as, a, as the existing firm. So we will need to determine what's the appropriate discount rate for that project. And if you look at Whole Foods, um, a, 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 a business or a, a, a company that has more similar risk to Whole Foods will be Trader Joe's or Stop and Shop than Amazon. So what that means is we will need to come up with, we, we can use the estimated beta, remember we can use the uh, the unlevered beta, or come up with the unlevered beta for uh, Trader Joe's, for example, and then adjust it for the financial risk, so financial leverage, the debt to equity ratio of Amazon, to come up with the appropriate discount rate that Amazon will use to evaluate the purchase of Whole Food. Um, that Another case is a company that have many different divisions. Um, an example that um, is oftentimes used is GE, General Electric, uh, which famously says that they make everything from light bulbs to jet engines to medical equipment. And obviously the business risk of light bulbs and the business risk of a jet engine is uh, very, very different. So what that means is each division in GE would have to have their own separate discount rate for them to use to evaluate projects. So the central theme here is that we have to match the risk of the project to the risk of the discount rate. Another consideration is flotation cost. So far, our assumption is that as long as the project is valuable, meaning that it has a positive net present value, it's a, it, it, the company should invest in it. Uh, we did not really take into account the cost involved in raising capital. So assume the money is always there. Uh, reality is that it costs money to raise money. And the transaction cost that is involved in raising capital is called flotation cost. So flotation cost includes all the legal costs and commissions uh, that you'd pay to law firms and investment bankers to, for example, issue stocks to raise equity or to issue bonds to raise debt. So what the 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 essence, the bottom line is that if you need money to raise money, that increase the cost of a project. So you increase the initial cost of a project. Uh, the best way to incorporate flotation costs, um, according to the author of our textbook, and um, I agree with, uh, with them in this, in this instance, is to uh, include the cost as the initial cost rather than increase the cost of capital. So here F stands for flotation cost. So and F is a weighted average. So you already saw uh, earlier. So we can uh, the weight is the 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 capital structure weight. Um, and F is so again it varies. The book has some statistics depending on whether or not you're raising equity or using raising debt. And the cost of equity, the flotation cost of equity, is typically a lot higher than the flotation cost of debt. So let's, let's take a very simple example. Let's say that a, a project tip, uh, right now has a cost of $800,000, but the rate of average flotation cost is 8%. 
So in order to start this project, that means in order to raise the $800,000 to start this project, you will need to increase the total initial cost from $800,000 using the formula to $869,565. So in other words, the flotation cost for this particular project is $69,565. So again, the, the important takeaway from flotation costs is that you need to incorporate that. So money is not free. So when, when we take that into account, the cost of the project is higher. Uh, this is similar to personal finance as well. If you buy a house and the house costs, say, $500,000, and you need to borrow $400,000, but you have to pay closing costs and origination fee. So if you borrow $400,000, you don't really have $400,000. So in order for you to have $400,000 walking away from the bank, you may have to borrow $420,000. The $20,000 in that case is the flotation cost. So a similar concept apply in um, corporate finance as well. But, uh, this concludes the overall discussion of this module, which is the beta average cost of capital. So now you have the tools to uh, estimate the discount rate. You already have the tools to uh, estimate cash flows and then to estimate the net present value, uh, as well as other capital budgeting methods. Congratulations.